Hey Shine Sisters, my name is Ann Tabor with Shine. We are a business of lifestyle where we focus on ways to bring joy into your life through simple things and uh, clothing and confidence and colors. And I wanted to give you a brief background about how um, my daughter-in-law and I got started in doing this business together. And this actually has been a long journey of just life experiences. I am a certified life coach and a health coach and a personal stylist, but what Libby and I want to bring to you in this channel and within our business is lifestyle tips. We want to be a life stylist for you. And in the way of being a life stylist, it's how do you find joy in everyday um, dull. Um, the problem is we have so many things in our life that really make us uh, tear us away with our distractions and tear us away from things that could potentially bring joy to our lives that we get so bogged down in that that we stop looking for the simple things in life that can bring us joy. So Libby is more of a behind the scenes girl. You'll see her in other videos in the future. But we work together. She does the creative, the technician, um, all of the, the social media blogs and posts. And I myself am more of the wisdom of the team because, hey, let's face it, i am reached that point now where um, some of my kids are married and grown and the others are getting ready to graduate from high school. So I'm kind of in that stage now of not quite empty nester. And over the years, there have been certain things that I have used in my life to help me find joy. So the title of this video is how to find joy my death experience so one day I was at a home I was painting and I didn't know I had this heart condition and I woke up in the hospital I had sudden cardiac death and sudden cardiac death means your heart just stops and the rest of your functions in your body stop and there's only 8% survival rate with that and as I was waking up in the hospital, if you can envision what they show you on TV with um, the little slits, the eyes are slit shut, and you see like this black screen in front of you, and the person that's in the coma is kind of blinking their eyes and trying to wake up, and the person that's in the coma hears little beeps and little sounds, and maybe they start to hear a voice over here, or they they see a form start to build over here. It's just like that when you're in a coma. When you're waking up from a, from a coma, you don't know what your surroundings are. As I was hearing the doctor tell me, um, you had a heart incident and you dropped dead, your heart stopped, we used CPR to get you going, we used the AED, and unfortunately during the process, you aspirated all of your stomach contents into your lungs, and we had then you had double pneumonia. You had 106 degree fever, we had to intubate you, and when you're intubated, you, you are in restraints, and so you don't have any motion, you can't talk. So it's trying to process all this information that something really, really big just happened to me. So as I'm trying to go through processing that in my mind, I was in the hospital for a total of nine days, and I went through a couple of um, angiogram, angiogram testing to make sure that there wasn't any blockage in my heart, but I have a pacemaker defibrillator, and my husband was with me every step of the way, and my mom was there with me. My three boys were only 14 um, and younger at that age, so I didn't even have anybody in high school. They were just middle school and, and grade school. My youngest was only four. But um, when we were going through that process, I remember coming home and sitting on my couch, and I can remember thinking, I'm alive. I have a second chance. I am going to do something different. I am going to rethink this. And I can remember my husband sitting down next to me and, and John and I have been married. This year will be 30 years. But as I sat down with him, he kept promising to me, he, he doesn't get emotional very much, but he was getting emotional with me and he said, Anne, I promise you things are going to be different. I'm not going to make you do as many things. I'm not going to put as much stress on you um, as handling all the bills you know, handling all the appointments, doing all the grocery shopping, maintaining all the things in the home, and working full time, taking care of the kids. He said, I'm going to change and I'm not gonna have as much stress on you. I thought, that's great, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take some R&R. &R. And in that six week process of recovery, I just really started just taking stock of what was going on in my life. But here's what really finally hit home with me. I can remember going to uh, pick out flowers at Lowe's and it was coming into the springtime. You know how you don't um, go shopping for flowers until after Mother's Day. We live in Ohio. In Ohio, you never know what you're going to get with the weather. So for us, we wait till after Mother's Day to plant our flowers. And as I'm looking at the flats of all of the colorful flowers and looking at the reds and the pinks and the purples and the yellows and the oranges, as I'm looking through all of that, I'm all of a sudden realizing that I'm alive. I get to see this. And 
you know how when you pray and, and you say, if you do this, God, I promise I'll be this way. I really think I went through that process on my mind again of this because I'm looking at all of these flowers and I'm thinking, little pretty flower, I haven't paid attention to you for years. Little beautiful breath of life, I haven't paid attention to you in so long because I've been so busy surviving that I wasn't thriving and living in what life had to offer me. And I think a lot of us are in that situation. I think what happens to those of us in our life as we just keep going through life and we're plugging through all of our responsibilities and we're doing all of our things as moms and we're doing our things as um, wives and friends and taking care of loved ones in your family that might have um, extended care needed um, for elderly parents or maybe your kids are out of the house now or your, your kids are little and you can barely think about what to wear for yourself during the day and going to the bathroom by yourself. No, the door always gets pushed open. And side note, even if you have kids Kids, and you have dogs and cats the dogs and cats want to push in on your private time too so there really is no private time in your life and at the time that I had my heart incident I was 39 years old and I was working full-time in my own business I have had my own painting interior business for uh, many years and before I transitioned into life coaching and health coaching and personal stylist I was not in that whole creative mode of my um, career. So in our joy, what I want you to do is focus on the small thing. I want you to think about a reawakening, a reviving of seeing your life. I want you to see the flowers. I want you to see your food and the beautiful color of food. I want you to see your children look at you and ask for your attention. And we are so busy and we are so distracted with our phones and our computers and our deadlines and everything that we do. If you are a multitasker, stop multitasking with your children. I don't want you to think about everything you have to do in a day. I want you to think about what you get to do during a day. As I was going through my box of cards and as I was looking at the article of how I survived um, my sudden cardiac death and in this article it says CPR saves a life. It's just really amazing that you don't know how people feel about you until they are given a second chance to express their love for you. I want you to focus on the love that's around you. I want you to focus on the people in your life. I want you to focus on who is there for you and let them be there for you. I want you to look at them, I want you to hug them and tell them that you love them. And I want you to focus every day on what you get to do in this life. I want you to focus every day on the loved ones that you have. And if you have to make a phone call to reconnect with somebody, make a call and reconnect. But I want you to start seeing your life as small pieces of this big giant puzzle that gets put together and woven together in beautiful things. And there's really sucky things in there too that go on in your life. But I want you to start focusing on the beauty of what's in your life. I want you to focus on the little things in joy that will put you in a state of being, which is your state of joy. It's embracing your life where you are now. It's looking for things that can make your life more enjoyable. And it's learning how through subscribing to this channel, reading books, learning about um, different things in your life that can bring um, good moments to you. But it's all about living in the now and embracing where you are so that you can find ways to create joy in your life. We're hoping to get content out for you three days a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Hopefully, if you would like to subscribe, click on the subscribe button below. Also, if you'd like to receive notifications of new content, make sure you click on the bell and you'll be sure to receive that in your inbox when we have new updates.